In this video, I want to show you how to use the C++ programming language to read in a data file like you might encounter in a programming competition, line by line by line. Uh, in particular, I like to read files in line by line and capture each line as a string and then process them all later. That way I can get all the file I.O. out of the way, uh, close the file and it's gone, and then I can get on with other business. And that's just my personal preference, uh, but I also have a good reason. Uh, and that relates to how the data files are organized, which I'll show you in just a minute. The second thing that we're going to do in this video is we are going to access the individual files that we want by identifying them as a command line argument to our program. Uh, so just in the same way you run a compiler and provide it the name of a file to compile, we're going to make it so our C++ program will take a command line parameter that <coughs> excuse me, identifies the file that we want to use as input. So let's take a look at an example file. Now this particular file is one I dreamed up for a fictitious problem that might be in a, a programming competition, but it definitely represents a more interesting file format. Very often, programming competition judging files are just a bunch of integers or a bunch of strings, one after another, line by line by line. Uh, and uh, while that's fine uh, and easy to process, you will encounter from time to time uh, data files that are a little bit more robust in their formatting, like this one. So with this one, uh, this is a fake or a, an input file for a fake program where the user is supposed to find, or the program is supposed to find, uh, all the lines of numbers that are data lines, add up the two numbers, and then say print out the sum. Very simple problem. We're not going to actually solve that problem because uh, there's no need for us to. I'm going to focus on the file I.O. But to construct an interesting uh, judge, judging data file, uh, I want that input file to have a fun format. So there are clearly lines that just have two numbers on them, and those lines are the data lines. Those are where we're going to add numbers up. But as a judge, I might want to give myself vertical white space, just like you do when you write code. So I want vertical white space to make blocks of individual tests more visible to me as an author. So I'm going to allow my data file to have blank lines in it as well. And as a third type of line to help me break this stuff into even more organized blocks that tell me a little bit about what was going on in my head, I'm going to allow certain lines uh, for comments, just like you can comment your code. And each of those lines, as you can see over here, starts with uh, a pound symbol. Now this file only has two of them, but again, it's just a very simple example. So if you were to write a program that just grabs an integer followed by another integer followed by another integer and another integer in pairs, that program is not going to work on this type of data file. And the reason being because not every line uh, has numbers on it. Uh, your blank lines might get skipped depending on uh, the nature of how you're trying to read integers, but that's not going to work when it comes to those lines that have comments. So instead what I want to do is just get line by line by line as standalone strings because then I can do trivial things like check to see if the string length is zero. If it is, then it's a blank line, and I can skip it. If the string has some length and the first character is a pound symbol, then I know it's a comment and I can skip that too. Then I'm all only left with data lines. Now again, we're not going to write that part. We're just going to write the code today that reads in the file, given a command line argument with the name of the file, and then breaks that thing up into a bunch of strings that we can deal with. Uh, now in particular, I'm going to um, I'm not going to store each of these strings just to keep the code simple right now. So I'm going to read in a whole line, and then we'll pretend we process it, and then I'll go ahead and read in the next line. So let's write some code. First, I'm going to create a new file. Uh, I will call it uh, program.cpp. And I'm going to pound include a few things at the top here, very standard things. So I'll pound include IO stream. It'll give me access to some basic uh, things like C out uh, for printing. Um, I'm going to have to use files, so I'm going to pound include the file stream header. 
And I am also going to do a bit of business where uh, once I get a line, I'm going to print it out so that I know we read it incorrectly. But I want to know that I read one line of the file and only one line, uh, and that I didn't accidentally read a line, its new line, and then the next line and some more text. So when I print out a line, I want to precede each one with the line number. That way, uh, if I, for some reason, end up with code that reads a little more than a line, uh, hopefully I don't, uh, I will see that because I'll have a line number, a line of text, some more text, maybe some more text, and then finally another line number. Uh, so when I print those line numbers out, I want them to kind of be uh, right justified. And that way, if I've got a one-digit number or a two-digit number or a three-digit number, they'll all line up on that right edge nicely. And to do that, I need uh, some I.O. manipulators so I can set the width when I print out a number. So let me pound include the I.O. manipulator header. Now, since this is a simple demonstration or a program for a programming competition. I'm not going to use a bunch of libraries. In fact, I'll use none other than the standard library. And so I'm not going to have to worry about any weird namespace collisions on objects or, or methods or classes or methods. So uh, while I would not normally do this in production code, I am going to go ahead and say that I'm using the namespace standard just so that Every time I end up using end line or C out uh, or other such things from the standard library, I don't have to preface them with the STD colon colon business. But I'm only doing that because this is for shortness. So let's get ourselves a main function in here. Ooh, ready to do. Oh, my autocomplete has left me with two ints. Let me correct that. Holy moly, that's not very good. <laughs> OK, so now I've got my uh, main function ready to go. And the first thing I'm going to do is open a file. So I need an input file stream, which I'll call f. And the name of that file is going to come from the argument vector. And it's going to be the first argument. So remember how I mentioned when you compile a program, you might say g++ space program.cpp. So when you type that, you typed a long string, but it's broken up into white space separated springs. Strings, not springs. So the first one of those is the G++ part. The second one of those is the part that says program.cpp. What happens is that gets passed in by the operating system to our main function when it launches our program as this thing called the argument vector, which is just an array of strings. So, or, you know, C-style strings, at the very least here. Uh, and the arrays in C++ being zero-based are going to have the G++ part, the first string, uh, in the zeroth position, and the program.cpp part in the first index. Uh, now, that's actually useful here because when I write uh, argv1 in this code, uh, it reminds me that it's taking the first parameter or the first argument as I think about it when I'm typing. So it's very simple here. Now I'm not going to test to see whether that file is open. I'm going to keep this code short and terrible uh, just so that we can get the core ideas. Now when I go to read in a line, I need a place to store it. So I'm going to create a sting, string variable called line. I have springs and stings in this video. So string line. And then I just go into a loop reading lines. So as long as I'm able to acquire a line, I'm going to use the get line function for this, which is very handy. It requires two parameters. The first is a file stream, and that's f. And the second is the line to which we want to store the string we read. That will be the variable line. So as long as getting another line is successful, which effectively means there is another line, as long as that works, then uh, we'll be able to process that line. So inside of this while loop is effectively where we would do whatever we need to do with an individual line. In our case, we just want to verify that we've 
actually read the line in. So we're going to print this thing out. We'll send it to C out. And I mentioned I want to get, um, let's see here, let me put in a line and then end line. So that's very simple. I'll save it. And then we'll go over here and see how it compiles. G++, I'll create a uh, executable called program. I'll do it from the file program CPP. All right, all that worked. Um, let's see here. Uh, it's program, and uh, we'll send it the input file. And there is the input file. It's there. But it's hard to tell whether we read each of those lines in as individual strings or we read in one giant string in one iteration of the loop. Uh, and when we print it out, it just looks like the file because that's what the file looks like. So let's stick in line numbers so we can make it extra clear that we actually did this correctly. To do that, I'm going to introduce outside of this while loop a new variable. Uh, it'll just be an unsigned integer. I'm choosing unsigned because there won't be any negative file lines. An unsigned int we'll call um, oops, line number. And I'll start it out at 0. Uh, I'm going to choose to start it at 0 rather than 1 just because um, until I have successfully read a line abstractly, I haven't seen any lines yet. Uh, but when I go to print it out, I'll just add one to it. So before the line, I'm going to print out the line number. And if I were to compile and run that, compile, run it. Oh, I didn't increment it. Terrible. What a shame this is caught on video. <laughs> Let's uh, increment that line number. Uh, I'm going to do it here in the beginning. Uh, line number plus plus. So foolish. Save, compile, run. So there it is. Uh, we can see the line numbers are there. Uh, we got one, two, three, four, etc. But uh, they don't look very nice. Let's clean that up by uh, coming in here and first of all, right justifying these things. I'm going to use an I.O. manipulator for setting the width of numbers to be eight characters wide and then otherwise be right justified. Then we'll send out the line number. And then I'll put a little colon with a few spaces and then the actual line itself. So let's save that. Come back. I'll get rid of, clear my screen. Oops, I got some extra characters there. Compile it. See if we can run it. And now we have a very nice looking bit of output here, right? So the line numbers are all lined up evenly to the right. Uh, and all the lines of the files are there. And because there's a line number in front of each, we can tell for absolute certain that we read this in correctly, line by line as individual strings. So the key points to remember here uh, from our C++ code, one is we've opened the file by uh, identifying its path through the command line argument. Since it's the first one and the only argument we provided, it's in the argument vector at position 1. After this, we use the get line function to take the next line from the file stream up to uh, the carriage return or the end of the file. Uh, and we store the result of that into our string called line. And that's really all you need to know to be able to read in a data file line by line in C++. Good luck in your programming competition, and have fun.